So the maze procedure again is, is a complicated set of lesions. We start off right, right from the start. As soon as you open the sternum, if you're going to do a maze procedure, you have to be thinking of left atrial exposure. And <clears throat> this is something I was taught a long time ago that once you open the sternum, before you even put the retractor in, as you're placing the retractor, you want to train the sternum more to the right. And what that does is it improves your visualization. It changes the angle at which you visualize not only the mitral valve, but also the entire left atrium. All right, so you push the right sternum further to the right. You want to do it so that it's relatively flat. And then when you put your stay centers in, you want the left pericardial stays to be relatively loose and the right pericardial stays to be relatively tight. You want to basically rotate the heart in the pericardium up like this towards you as an open case. Now, cannulation is also very important. As I talked about before, um, in the SVC and the IVC, it's easy. You have to get above the cable atrial junction with your clamp. So in the SVC, you want to cannulate the mid, eight, mid superior vena cava. In the IVC, I would not recommend going down into the IVC, especially after it's been mobilized, because it's actually not great tissue. So I would indeed cannulate the base of the right atrium in good tissue so that it's got, it'll hold sutures well and all that. Um, once you mobilize the IVC up and you have to go and do the inferior cable atrial junction, you just have to release your snare to get your clamp in there. So a number of uh, successful pearls, so to speak. You have to have a plan on how you're going to do this. And let's just take the simple plan. You're going to do one bypass. And let's just say it's a vein bypass to the right coronary artery, and you're going to do a mitral valve replacement, and you're going to do a maze procedure. Okay, so the way I would personally do this operation would be is that I would do the right pulmonary veins on bypass, but not cross clamped. The left pulmonary veins on bypass, not cross clamped. Cross clamp the heart. Do the right saphenous vein bypass graft or whatever graft you're going to use for the right coronary artery. Then I would do the left atrial appendage, including ligation of it. I would then open the left atrium widely. I would first do my coronary sinus lesion, then my mitral annular lesion. Then I would do the uh, floor and roof lesions for the left atrium. Then hopefully by then, the left atrium, the, the mitral angus is thawed out enough to work on it. And you can go ahead and replace it or repair it, whatever you're planning. I would then close the left atrium and you can either do the right side either on with the cross clamp on or with the cross clamp off. I personally like to do it with a cross clamp on. It's just, it's just easier for me to do it that way. But you have to have an attack plan. And that attack plan has to include the fact that if you're gonna work on a valve, you don't wanna be freezing it right before you work on it if you can help it. You gotta give it time to thaw out. All right, so we'll put the pericardial, like I said, we'll, surgical exposure begins with the left atrium with the sternotomy and the stay sutures. You got to have the clamp and the cryoprobe available prior to our cardiopulmonary bypass. Uh, you have to have the appendage clips in the room prior to cardiopulmonary bypass, in my opinion. I perform three complete lesions sets per named Cox maze lesion. All right, but this is really an important thing.